All right, guys, I am back with Dr. Donald Lehman. And as you know, I am a new mother. Well, if you didn't know that, I am a new mother. And my baby is a year old. Uh, I wanted to talk about protein needs in children. And protein needs in children are very hard to study because the methods of studying protein needs like uh, isotopes and muscle biopsies really aren't done. I know that I wouldn't want my one-year-old going through that. So we now really are based, uh, our recommendations based on extrapolated data for children. And, you know, I was looking at some of the research. There has been no new literature on this topic for a long time. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, it was, it's basically growth data, right. uh, basically looking at the amount of protein required to stay on a certain growth curve. And mm -hmm. as long as you stay on the growth curve, the assumption is the protein amounts right. And and, uh, you know, that seems to have been okay, but it's not very specific. I mean, it's a really gross generalization. And, and, you know, one of the areas where there has been a lot of study is looking at infant formulas. So in the first year and a half or so, and there's been quite a lot of study of looking at amino acids, so tryptophan levels and phenylalanine levels and leucine and, and methionine levels. And we realized that how you balance the individual amino acids makes a difference. Uh, we've never been able to translate that into 10-year-olds or 16-year-olds or whatever, because it's just never been studied. So that's interesting. Breast milk has been studied, formulations have been studied, and that really kind of ends at a year of life. And then, you know, I, I do and have received many questions as it relates to protein need per bolus, right? So protein need per meal versus yeah. protein need per day. And you and I were talking, the truth is we talk every day. Yeah. And we were talking about that um, childhood protein needs, because they're already very anabolic and in, in a growth phase, is more likely, it's more important to the 24 hour protein intake. And perhaps a child would get a, you know, an anabolic response from five grams of protein. Yeah. Most of the data, again, as you've sort of already implied, we, we don't have much data below about 20-year-olds. I mean, college students, we can do a biopsy on. They can give their own consent. But a child can't give a consent, so we can't study them in that way. So we're kind of extrapolating. But we do know that if you look in 20-year-olds, you'll get some anabolic response in muscle with five or 10 or 15 gram meal, where in a 50 year old, you'll get nothing until you get up to 30 grams. And my assumption has always been that's primarily because you have so many hormones helping to drive growth when you're young. Right. It makes the body very efficient. Uh, insulin, for example, is primarily a growth hormone. But once you stop growing, then it really doesn't do much else other than help with glucose disposal. Right, um, right, or make your waistline grow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's really not a very good hormone for glucose disposal because it puts it in all the wrong places. <laughs> yeah, right. It's interesting. It, you know, I wonder what the differentiating age group would be. So 20, they can get a robust response. And it's interesting when you look at the, the literature, it is. It's yeah. 18, 20 year old, it's all very active young men. Um, I'm curious as to when that, and I actually haven't seen any data with five grams. I've only seen it, I wanna say 18 grams, kind of that 15 to 18 grams. Um, so that's- or At what age, uh, with younger people? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Stu Phillips did, um, you know, college age people mm -hmm. looking at 5, 10, 15, oh, 20. Interesting. So and did they get a type of He's response? got probably the tit best trituration curve. Luke Van Loon has a little bit of that. But uh, we clearly know that younger adults will get a stimulation at much lower levels. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably, Sense. it's a combination of hormones that make in older adults, we know that leucine signal is absolutely critical. Right. It doesn't seem to be nearly as critical in younger adults or children. Do you think, you know, and we've talked about this before, do you think that it's possibly just an energy issue? 
as it relates to muscle protein synthesis or the anabolic response? Is it just purely ATP? Uh, for the difference to the older adults? Yeah, I mean, so we know with the older adults that leucine is critical. It seems as if it's not as critical in the younger adults and maybe perhaps more driven by hormones. But I'm wondering also if, you know, the leucine mTOR signaling isn't, you know, it, it's not necessarily as important in younger adults. Is it purely just an overall energy intake issue? Yeah. That, that I, the difference between the younger and older, I mean, some, uh, I mean, Blake Rasmussen has good data on blood flow. We know the capillary uh, yes. flow goes down in older adults. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know the signaling, the mTOR signaling is less sensitive. Uh, insulin is less sensitive. Uh, it could be cell transports. I mean, there's a variety of possibilities where there's some data to support it. Mm. Uh, personally, I think it's a blood flow and hormone issue that is, are the two leading candidates that younger people are just much more sensitive than an older adult. You know, it would make sense because some of the, the data would support that once you increase blood flow, i.e. resistance training, other forms of exercise, you bring more nutrients and blood flow to the muscle tissue, sure. and then you get a, a more robust signal. Yeah. yeah, and in my geriatric training, it is certainly well known that there's a decrease in splanchnic extraction. So yeah. there's a, a decrease in the uptake of amino acids, about particularly, which you know, is, is very interesting as we begin to think about the topic of sarcopenia. So, so I mean, clearly yeah. resistance exercise uh, and, high, and higher quality protein diets can help blunt that aging effect. So both of those are kind of central to keeping the muscle healthy. Yeah, couldn't agree more. All right, guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Like it and share it and stand by for next week and make sure you sign up for the newsletter.